Welcome back. Next, let's take a look at casting textual data types in Q. So as we know, we've got our two types of textual data that we've seen before. We've got our strings and we've got our symbols. So starting with strings, we've learned that they're just really lists of characters. So you can see I can create a string like this. So I have multiple characters separated by a join. That would be the exact same thing as doing this here. Oh, put it into lowercase. And you can see I've got my two strings. So first of all, casting to a string, how do I do this? So we, we've seen this in our previous module on string manipulation. We've got our really handy keyword called string, which does it for us. We don't need to worry about using dollar or anything. When you want to have your data type converted to a string, just simply put the word string in front of it. So you can see here, my date has now converted my float and this here float. And you can note the difference here. When I don't have anything after the decimal place, which have zeros here, I'm not gonna get that represented in the string. So for example, if we add these, still have nothing and then as soon as you put some sort of quantifiable value in there that will be represented um just to be aware of that and you can see here the final one we're casting from a symbol to a string um and in this example here we're just showing we can use string across a general list um so we've got a mix in here we've got in long an integer a date and a time and when i run string on that it's casting each one. So you notice I'm not actually using the each keyword here. I don't need to. Um, string it understands that you're trying to iterate over every value in the list. Okay, fairly straightforward. Have a go at exercise here. And when you're happy with that, let's move on and look at casting from a string, which is where things start to look a little bit different than what we've seen to date. So Let's start with this string here. So this looks to me to be, um, you know, I, I want to cast this to a float. This came in my incoming file. I'd say that's that's a float value. I might try to do something like this. So using the symbol name, or I might try and use the short value, or even we know we have our character value as well as a third option. So we'll try all those and let's see what happens. So what happens here is I'm getting my ASCII representation of every single character. So if we look up here, we see We've got four, which is turning into 52, two is 50. So if we went and checked out the ASCII representation and looked up four, you'd see that's 52 and two here is 50. So that's what's happening there. Um, so presumably that's not what we want to happen. And if that's the case, we need to go about our casting from a string a little bit differently than our other data types. Um, and that's using this uppercase here. So in the case of casting from a string, we need to use uppercase character value. So you'll see here, once I have the uppercase F in comparison to these three options, it's making the whole entire thing a float. So if I ran type on this, I would see I now get my minus nine H, which I know is my, my float type, which is what I wanted. And also here, we're just saying when you try to cast strings to symbols using the keyword symbol or using your short value 11h for example that's not going to work you're going to get a type error so your other options here are either doing uppercase s for example and you do have one more option when you're going from a string to a symbol and that is just simply putting the back tick out in front so without the keyword symbol there okay so we're just showing a few more examples here. We've got casting a string to a long, a string to a real, and a string to a time. So let's see what we get with those. And you see we've got our three new data types here. Um, and, and do be careful, we've got a little warning here. If you cast a string that has decimal points, but actually is a whole number, so there's no values after the decimal point, what's gonna happen is we try and cast that to a whole data type, like a long, for example, is you'll get a null. So let's just try that out and prove that's the case. So you can see this is happening. That's not what I wanted. Um, what I'd have to do is make sure that's a float because I have the decimal places um, and, and bring it in that way and then cast it once it's been loaded in. Um, alternatively, I could try and edit my incoming data um, to get rid of the decimal points because I don't need them. So that's something just to be aware of again when loading data. You need to be aware of your, your numeric data types and, and what they are in your source data and, and then what you're converting them to in your schemas. Okay, 
So have a go at casting the string of this to a date. So we're going to need to use our uppercase character of date. So just to, in case it's not obvious, this character here is the exact same one we use um, as before. It's a C. It's just going to be the uppercase version of that. Okay. So next, let's take a look at the second textual data type, which is our symbols. So casting to a symbol. Um, so when we have symbols, we've only got one option. And that is when casting to a symbol, we can only cast from a string. So for example, here, if I wanted to cast this date to be a symbol, I first have to string it or stringify it, some people call it. So up here, you'll see these have all become symbols. If I tried to do these without that string command in the middle, you'll see I get a type error. And just to prove that's still there when there's no space, you see that we're getting that. So that's a very special case with symbols you need to be aware of. Um, you need to put string in front of it. And we're showing the same thing here, just with functional notation, with our square brackets again, we're casting this float to a string and then to a symbol. And then we're casting this list here to a symbol. Okay. So have a go with this exercise, testing that out. And then the final variation is casting from a symbol. So similarly, when you're casting to a symbol, we only have one option. And that is the only thing that can be casted from a symbol is a string. So for example, here I've got these symbols. All I can do is make them strings. I'm not able to cast them directly to another data type. Um, now in this exercise here, I'm showing, okay, I've got these and I want to make them longs. How would I do it? You would first make them strings and then you would be able to convert them into longs. So you'll see that in here. I've got our string first of all and then our longs. Okay, so that's it for our casting modules. Just to recap what we went through here, we started off looking at the implicit casting and we've seen some examples with our temporal data types. We were able to do that without actually using our cast operator. Then we've seen how we can use the cast operator on our numerical and temporal data types. And then we looked at some of the special cases with strings and symbols. So just to remember when we have strings, we, we will get the ASCII representation. We need to make sure that we've got that uppercase character value. And then with their symbols, we must either convert to a string or from a string, first of all, um, and then we can cast into our other data types. So it's a short module with casting, but a very important one. And it will come up again and again in our future modules. So. As before, you can navigate up a level here and you'll be able to access our corresponding exercises and a little quiz basically to test your knowledge you've learned today and work through some additional examples. So have a go at those and thanks for listening and I'll hopefully see you back in another module very soon.